the Thoughty or Tea podcast. What about uh, CBD? Because that, you know, for anyone who's in the UK, you, you'll undoubtedly like have seen some corner shops selling CBD vapes or lollipops or drinks, and there was a big craze about it, perhaps like, I don't know, two, two or three, four or five years ago or something. Probably when, also, the, when the farm bill in the US passed. Because it yeah. immediately made it more accessible to us. And I think it always was accessible to you, but it wasn't like as popular, maybe. No, I know it definitely wasn't as, as popular, but then then I go by like the, I don't know how to describe it, maybe like a, the British version of Whole Foods, like uh, yeah. Holland and Barrett is, is kind of like the supplements and the sort of organic kind of Natural and, focused, yeah. like... Yeah, we saw that CBD in the, in there, and obviously, like you know, looking into it, it's not the best quality, but well, it's definitely like around. And so, I feel like a lot of people in the UK kind of they either have this perception of it, like still still being s somewhat taboo, or just being like a stain coil, like just yeah, another that's... like supplement that people have. Oh, that's so hard because quality is difficult without a certificate of analysis or a COA, like a third party. And there's again, when we're talking about product quality and how we have so much product diversity with CBD, I really believe in full spectrum products, which means it's everything in the plant, which means that it has a little bit of THC, like not enough to make you feel pretty much anything, but enough that it's it the entourage effect or something. It like is. That. Yeah, the entourage, that's perfect. The entourage effect is actually a term that was coined to talk about our own brains and the endocannabinoid system has an entourage effect. And then that term got hijacked to apply to cannabis, but it makes perfect sense with cannabis too. I mean, it, we have a complementary entourage effect going on and that's one of the reasons why I'm a big promoter of like full plant extracts that contain everything in the plant because there are hundreds of molecules and so when it comes to hemp, CBD is really similar to THC. The molecules are very similar, but they feel very different. And they actually interact with different parts of the brain and have different, or sorry, different receptors in the brain and have different interactions with, with those receptors. And so CBD is non-intoxicating. It does not alter your state. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. People use it for all the same reasons, pretty much. But I think that it's my personal opinion is that its biggest therapeutic value is probably in like a chronic dosing routine for most people. And I think it's most powerful therapeutic effect is that it's an anti-seizure molecule and that it's a yes. really powerful anti-seizure molecule. It means it also helps for migraines. They share an iteration. THC helps for migraines as well. And I think for CBD, because it's so accessible, you know, there's been a good amount of research that's come out recently about aversive behaviors like for autistic kids and and CBD or rare cannabinoid formulations and it's complicated because a lot of these studies they have different dosings and there's different and then how yes. does that compare yeah. to what's on the market etc and so it really still is going to be trial and error but if someone to me tells me like this is just an example and i'm not going to like give any specifics i'm not a medical professional this is not medical advice not we are not suggesting anyone do any of these things and everyone should check all of the laws in their local areas uh, before they choose to do whatever they want to do but if i were to instruct someone in the beginning which i do often to suggest like how someone would try it out. It's always just to start with the smallest amount, you know, like just start with one, start with half of one. You probably won't yes. feel anything, right? Because you're not going to feel anything and then you're going to feel safer being like, okay, I'll try a little more, right? And you get to a point where like maybe you are going to like you try a little more. And the other thing is maybe you try doing this over the course of at least say like two to three weeks, because even with pharmaceuticals, sometimes you don't see the therapeutic benefit until a few weeks has gone by. And one of 100%. the biggest benefits, yeah, one of the biggest effects for me in cannabis is definitely a prolonged effect. So 
it's the reason why I use cannabis every day. It's the reason why I treat it as a medicine this way is because the effect will build and stabilize within my body. And so like maintaining it at that steady state is actually what keeps me stable. It helps me with mood regulation. It helps me in general with chronic pain, with my GI stuff, like, and because it's stored in like the fat stores in your body, isn't it? Like it is. And on top of it being stored in your fat and then re-released because as you like exercise or walk or throughout your day, on top of that, it also creates changes in the levels of the receptors, like in the brain. So every time that it's activating these receptors, it sends a signal and your body and your brain, you know, it your body and your brain is always changing. It's always changing from one thing to what it's going to be in the future. And so it'll signal your body and brain to change like either different levels of the receptor, different expressions like of the areas of where the receptor will be localized, etc. And we don't fully understand like these like long-term well, effects, right? Like the more, yeah. and, and it, to say that we don't understand it in cannabis in THC and CBD, like I will throw it out there and say that we don't fully understand it in the psychopharmaceuticals as well. So for all of the unknown that I'm like describing in receptor pharmacology, it, it exists as well in the psychopharmaceuticals. And so it's, it's the same kind of level of unknown. So I don't want to like scare people with this unknown and be like, well, we don't really know. There's there's a lot that we don't know, and I think that that's exciting. I think it's also a lot of promise. And when it comes to CBD, it's my life changed when I started using it medicinally. You know, I I use it. I use it daily. I got the oh nice the full yeah full for recovery for recovery. CBD. It's huge. I, like for the recovery for athletes, it's absolutely an integral piece. It's more for the it's more for the anxiety and the sleep. Nice, um, it, it works, me, but it's. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I I use like a vaporizer, and I have like the there's a few companies in the in the UK that sell like zero to well not not zero but like yeah as within, reasonable as they can get it down. You know? Yeah, within within the legal limits for it to still mm. be classified as hemp. So yes. hemp is cannabis. Hemp is a type of cannabis that just has way way lower percentages of THC. And using hemp products, I will say that if you are going to get drug tested, using hemp products can make you test positive if they are full spectrum because they have THC in them, but it's not enough for you to feel the THC effect, right? It's, it doesn't, it's a very, very mild effect. And I started dosing CBD more intentionally and using it and evaluating it. Oh my goodness, a long time ago now, 2015. So eight years ago. And it really changed my perspective on a lot for me to begin to understand it and even to mix it with THC and to create ratios. And, you know, there are plants out there that are mixed as well, like plants, uh, cannabis plants that have both. So they're between yeah. hemp and, and traditional THC cannabis. And there, so there's plants that make both, and then there's there's products that you could formulate to have both, right? Well, I think that that's like I think that's one of the 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 issues in the UK because it's um you know because it isn't there isn't like a variety of different strains and <laughs> you know type types of it and ratios of CBD and THC that are like standardized, and you do have to, I think. If you don't go through the medical routes and you don't get like the, which I think you can do in the UK, some some clinics that have that have done it. Um, if you don't go through those routes, you are like you you're getting something which is high, extremely high sort of high THC, low low CBD. You know, very sort of you know stuff that could, it could have other things in it. You know, it's not like a it's gone through any process. It's it's it could have come from anywhere, really. Yeah, that's this is the problem of accessibility, right? This is an issue because the medicine is different, and you could always mix them separately, which, like, I do, right? I have CBD products and THC products, and you could mix them. You could dose them at the same time, right? Like one right after the other. But this accessibility to the diversity thing, it really is a medical issue, specifically for neurodivergent people. Because we we can react so differently to yes. 
any substance for for that matter, it, it's worth noting that our brains are usually atypical and many of us take pharmaceuticals like or have taken pharmaceuticals in the past. And it, it is important. Being a yes, big one. Like, <laughs> I haven't so I, I actually haven't personally had to deal with this in a long time because I haven't taken any psychopharmaceuticals in like 14 years or something. But I know and I want to just say a PSA that that it is really important for CBD specifically that if you are taking pharmaceutical medications, that if you start taking really high doses of CBD, I'm talking about like very, very high doses, like this is like in the 500 milligram plus per day dose, right? Like, and usually for context, usually like if you get like a whole bottle of something, it'll be only like a thousand milligrams or something, right? Yes, so, yeah. So this is like a huge dose, but people do need that dose for seizures. Like people do need that dose for, for migraines. Like it, it is, it is a high dose, but it is also a dose that, that people do need therapeutically. But if you are at those really high doses, you need to be careful with your pharmaceuticals as well, because it is possible for CBD to make those pharmaceuticals last longer in your body. 100%, so yeah. basically, it doesn't break down as quickly, which then means that if you take more of it, you're going to have more of that in your body. Is it, is it to do with like the liver enzymes and yes. stuff? Like, I think there's like... I'm from a university that's like sip sip fifty or it I is can't yeah it's a yeah. cytochrome cytochrome P four fifties yeah so yeah, yeah. Zip. yeah yep yeah. no they uh they well, grapefruit, I mean, grapefruit juice is another one that yeah in I love inhibits grapefruits them. oh no, I love never. grapefruits too man that's, that's can never funny. have them though, sadly <laughs> um well not at the moment I suppose 